I want to broaden out this discussion, too, a little bit more in terms of where the SEC might go in terms of ramping up uh, if they are reigning in of crypto. And for more on that, I want to bring on uh, Chester Spat, professor of finance at Carnegie Mellon's uh, University Tepper School of Business, as well as a former chief economist and director of the SEC's Office of Economic Analysis, joining us once again. Uh, and Professor Spat, thanks for coming on to chat here. I, I just want to play a piece from the opening remarks in terms of where Gary Gensler is kind of operating from in terms of why he thinks it's so important to start reining in the crypto markets. Take a listen to what he said earlier. We just don't have, I believe, enough investor protection in crypto finance, the issuance of these tokens, the trading, and particularly the lending. Frankly, as I've said before, I think it's more like the Wild West. Claims of crypto being the Wild West for a while, Professor Spat, and, and you know, uh, the, the lending protocol piece of all this is increasingly, I think, where the SEC is focused in on uh, in the securities debate. I mean, what do you make of, of them maybe targeting that piece that has them, I, I guess, most worried right now? Well, I think it's an interesting, it's kind, it's kind of an, it's an interesting direction and I think I think likely to be a somewhat contentious uh, uh, direction uh, to what extent I mean it raises the question to, to what extent is uh, lending um, is that a secure is that a security we in many other contexts we often don't think of lending as necessarily a security but the, one of the key prongs of course in the Howey test which emerged in this morning's hearing was the Howey test involves expectation um, of, of, of profit. Um, you know, I think it's an interesting issue also from another, um, perspective. Tradi tra traditionally, there hasn't been, uh, so much transparency, um, in, in lending, in lending, uh, even in the equity markets with respect to, sh to short, to short, to short sales and lend and lending of, of securities. And, it, you know, it seems this raises the issue of, of whether there ought to be a, a lot more transparency and a lot more spotlight on those types of issues involving lending. Yeah, the other pushback, too, uh, from Senator Toomey there was maybe not so much in terms of, uh, though he did disagree with him, the idea that the stable coin would pass the second prong of the Howey test, which is uh, about expectations of profit. If you have a stable coin that expected to stay at $1, Forever, obviously, there wouldn't be expectations of profits there. But again, Coinbase and what they were trying to do was giving a four percent return to people on their right. holdings of stable coins. Maybe that piece, right? Right. Well, that's why I linked it. That's why I linked it to other aspects of lend. That's why I linked it to other aspects of lending. Um, you know, it, se it seems to me in part what Coinbase uh, is trying to do is setting up setting up some sort of lending um, uh, contract. Although the the issue I think about the, about the viability of such a lending contract is how is a how in the current environment is a four percent interest rate uh, a su sustainable? Um, uh, but that but that does arise also in other contexts such as securities lending when at least when a stock is on special. Um, now I think here 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 the the issue is is the is the price of the stable coin necessarily. Is it going to hold? Is it going to hold to that peg uh, of a dollar? Um, yeah, and that's why there's potentially some credit risk uh, here, and I think that's the that, that's what the SEC um, presumably has in mind. Well, that's why I think it's fascinating to see you know the issuer of that particular stablecoin, USDC, kind of shift away from what Tether and others have done, which is establish kind of credit risk there and the holdings they have. USDC pivoted uh, right before we heard the SEC come out with kind of their pushback here. Uh, pivoted to just have cash and treasuries backing their stablecoin rather than other credit risks that are involved, like corporate debt. Um, but to, to Senator Toomey's point here, it seems like he's taking issue with the lack of clarity at the SEC, saying, you know, you shouldn't come out and maybe threaten to sue a company over this rather than get your thinking out there publicly. I mean, you know, you've been involved at the SEC before. Uh, what do you make of maybe how close-knit, or I guess, uh, closed in terms of their own thinking internally, they haven't shared a lot uh, about what they are thinking when it comes to crypto securities. Maybe Gary Gensler would push back on that and say, no, we've been pretty clear, but what do you make of it? Well, well, well cer certainly, uh, you know, as, a, as I was reading the public pronouncements last week from, from Coinbase, it's, it's clear that that's the position of Coinbase. Um, they feel, they, Coinbase feels they've been completely transparent um, with the SEC and the SEC hasn't disclosed its its thinking. Um, 
you know, and it, obviously I've not been party to those conversations. Um, and so can't, can't offer a definitive judgment about that, but clearly Coinbase's position um, is that the SEC asked lots of questions um, and it's not saying much about its, its own views beyond the, the threat last week of the, of the, of the lawsuit. Um, if Coinbase went ahead um, with this 4% product. The other last thing, too, uh, I have to ask you today, it has nothing to do with crypto, but it was one of the last questions I heard before we came on air here from Senator Kennedy talking about whether or not he thinks, he asked Gary Gensler if he thinks he's the daddy of all these corporations because he's now, uh, you know, he was talking about climate risk disclosures and why the SEC might be pushing for those. Gary Gensler says because investors care about it and they want to know about it. So they're going to want to ask companies to disclose this. But it does seem like the SEC is really ramping up in terms of asking for disclosures there. We've heard a lot of, uh, about a diversity push among board members of these companies. Uh, what do you make of maybe how much farther the SEC is willing to go in terms of pushing for some of these things that apparently Senator Kennedy says might be going too far? Well, well, I, I think the SEC is pushing in, in, in some of these directions. It, you know, it seems to me part of a, a broader uh, push from the Biden administration on on a on a on a number on a number of of fronts, um, um, uh, you know, I would say I I I, I would say um, you know I think that it's important that the SEC uh, you know he, he focuses on its knitting, um, which is an in invest investor pr protection. Um, uh, it you know it does it does it does seem to me that there are some other regulators in Washington. Um, who are better better positioned to address some of the issues such as climate change, such as the EPA, um, and and they ought to be you know in the in the lead uh, on these on these types uh, of issues. You know, obviously, if there are real risks that a company uh, is is confronting, um, then obviously there needs to be appropriate disclosure. But the current the current regulatory framework makes clear that companies must dis must disclose. Um, uh, material material risk, and you know it seems to me that that would provide a natural basis um, uh, on which the SEC should should try to should try to build and should try to focus. Um, you know, and I think there's going to probably be a lot of controversy uh, about uh, some of of the efforts to extend uh, uh, the SEC's range as, as part of uh, broader initiatives of the administration. Yeah. And I mean, I, similar to the way we've seen kind of all these agencies battling around that uh, in crypto, you're also probably going to see a few of these agencies battling around the way to push some of those uh, uh, Biden administration's goals there when it comes to companies and the like. But Chester Spat, a professor of finance at Carnegie Mellon University's Tepper School of Business. Appreciate you coming on here to chat all of that with us today. Be well, sir.